All right, let's get at it, guys. How you doing? I survived the COVID. <laughs> I survived the COVID. It's been a couple weeks now since I've uh, been live streaming, but I'm back. And my God, we got a lot of stuff to do. The bike is really starting to come together, man. Hey, Roger. Hey, thanks for uh, being patient and uh, joining the live stream, man. I appreciate it. It's good to see you. Uh, very good to see you, actually. And, um, man, we made some huge progress on the bike here in the last last week or so, man. I was kind of down for the count for about, um, I don't know, probably about 15 days it took me to come back from that. And uh, man, when I got ready to rock and roll, um, I just started jamming stuff out. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, feeling good to be back. And uh, a lot of good stuff happening uh, with the 1970 CL 350 build. Um, I'm excited. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. Oh, I gotta move the camera up, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's what we're going for, man. There it is. There's the beauty. I love it. I absolutely love the way that this has come out, man. Um, that's it. We're going for a silver and black accent CL350. And I actually blacked out these badges. So all you can really see is this chrome. There, oh, that's a good shot of it. Roger, you're on your boat. That's awesome, man. It's so awesome that you're watching the stream on the boat. Um, these badges came out awesome. So these were, these were kind of replica badges I had picked up a while back. And they had a white background on them. They were kind of your typical deal. But uh, after much, much, much deliberation, I decided to black them out and just roll with the chrome. That looks freaking beautiful. I'm so happy. And uh, just so you know that these are the um, replica side covers that I got off of eBay a while back, if you refer back to the stream. And these actually painted up really, really, really nice. Um, all I had to do is really scuff these up. I scuffed them up really good, I think, with about a thousand sandpaper. I primed them and I painted them. And uh, little secret, guys, you ain't going to believe this, but uh, this silver paint was actually already in my shop. I already had it because this is the aluminum paint that I was going to paint the 72CL engine with. And I had like three cans of it, and I did some testing, I did some priming, I did some testing... And I was just like, damn, that actually looks really, really good. So this is actually um, <laughs> aluminum engine paint, VHT, I believe. Yeah, it was VHT aluminum engine paint. And then I clear coated these with the 2K clear. Um, I put a picture of that on the Facebook group. So I'm loving it. Uh, because it was a 70, I did go ahead and paint the bucket as well. Um, because pre-70, um, the bucket's matched. So it's got one little ding in it, but it's on the bottom. So I'm really not even that worried about it. Not worried about it at all. And uh, I think it's going to look pretty cool. So tonight, kind of one of the goals is, is to get the headlight together, get that all put back together. I think that would be a lot of fun. And then how about this tank, man? Let's see if I can get, get a little mobile here, give you a little bit of a look. Got a little bit of reach, but there's that tank, man. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful, man. I love it. I hope it's as nice as your boat, Roger. But it came out really good. I mean, the more you practice, the more you do stuff, the better you get. And this is definitely one of the cleanest tanks that I've, uh, that I've painted so far. Um, I filled it back up. I sealed it off and I filled it back up with vinegar because it is still a little bit rusty inside. But how about those badges? There, I did the blackout badges on this as well. And I'm telling you, man, that paint job came out almost flawless, man. I had to do just a little bit of Bondo work. I had to do just a, just a little bit. There's a couple of Bondo spots on it. But this tank was remarkably clean. 
Um, I was really blown away how clean that tank actually was. And I'm just loving this black and silver combo that we got going on. What do you guys think? Loving it. I am loving that. These badges really, I think they, they do a great number on it. You know, they just pop. They just kind of pop right off of there. I'm really excited and you know, I've got the reflector and you can kind of get an idea of what these forks are gonna look like. And then, you know, I just uh, did a, a, another video and uh, we buffed and polished out these, uh, oops, got this cord in the way. Buffed and polished out the sanctions. They ain't perfect, but they are pretty damn pretty. <laughs> and I like them, I like them a lot. So we're really, I mean, ultimately, um, I can put the front forks together um, one thing that I did want to show you guys, though, is that I did have to end up going and getting another set of gators because there's a little bit of a difference. Hey, Josh, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Kevin, thanks for joining the stream. That's awesome. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm loving this. I'm absolutely freaking loving the way that this bike is going to look. Silver and black. Oh, God, those badges. I just cannot get enough of these badges. These were... I deliberated and deliberated and deliberated as to whether or not <laughs> I was going to black those out or not. But um, yeah, dude, sandblasting. Kevin, I was sandblasting a little bit tonight. And that new compressor that I got is making all the freaking difference. But uh, I want to walk through tonight probably the difference in these gators because I just assumed that these were all the same. And they're actually not. Um, these have a dozen, a dozen ridges. And then the, there's another set that has 10. And those tens are not going to work. I'll show you that later in the stream tonight. So um, had to pick up another set of these. They weren't too expensive. I think they were 25, 30 bucks. But we've got those. So these front forks are good to go. We've got our, our front and rear bearings. All right, I ended up going four into one on these because Common Motor is pretty much out of everything right now. Like, it's out of everything. So I ended up getting the all balls <laughs> bearings. I've never used these before. Or, you know, I just might not be aware of it. They might be the same damn bearings that Common Motor is selling. I don't know. I will say that these were, I don't know, not, maybe not half the cost, but at least 25% cheaper, I think, than what I was paying Common Motor. And then, and I love Common Motor, don't get me wrong. They just were out of stock. And then because I did save quite a bit of money, I did go ahead and get uh, tapered bearings. Let me open this up. I did go get it, go ahead and get tapered bearings for the top end here. So instead of going and doing the, uh, you know, putting all the, the loose balls in, we've got a nice set of tapered bearings that we can go and put in on this. Man. Hey, thanks, Josh. Thank you so much, man. I've been working hard on making improvements to the stream, you know, every single week, honestly. I've been just, you know, kind of looking back at the videos and then... Um, saying okay where can we improve things so i think i got the i think i got the lighting down the addition of the lavalier mic totally was a game changer for the whole setup so yeah i'm glad you're enjoying it man i'm glad you're enjoying it so yeah we're uh just getting started it's been a couple weeks man um i've been kind of kind of missing this stuff tonight what i want to do is i want to do a little bit of buffing because i've got all my lights all figured out okay so there's one of my lights and these things are pretty crusty pretty gross all right, pretty crusty, pretty gross. But we can turn them into this in just a matter of minutes. And these are just shiny, nice mirrors, again, uh, restoring these old lights. So we're going to do those tonight for sure. And then, let's see, if I grab, let's see, where's my other camera here? Oh, yeah, I can show you. We got a whole bunch of unpacking to do with the Evapo Rust. All right. I'm not sure how ambitious I'm going to be tonight. Honestly, we'll see how it goes. Ooh, we'll see how it goes. But what I'm excited about is, is diving in to this batch back here. Because if you look back over here, see that big purple tub back there? That is full of evaporust. And... Uh, we got a wheel in there. We got our rear wheel sitting back in there. And uh, we're going to be able to go to work on that. So that's going to be kind of a little adventure 
for tonight as well. It's going to be awesome. Roger, glad we're stable. Stability is really, really important when we're doing all this stuff. And uh, made some upgrades to, to uh, how you know, I'm getting bandwidth down here to deal with all this stuff because it, it's a little bit of a resource hog to be pushing all this stuff, but it's great. Kevin, really informative videos. Helps me with my CB500 FK272. That's really good to hear, man. Um, I'm, I'm glad that people outside of the 350s are finding the videos useful. Um, you know, I, I started this stuff kind of as, I knew it was gonna be super, super niche, but more and more I'm getting comments from people who are working on other styles of bikes, even different brands of bikes, and uh, they're, they're, they're picking up some um, good tips and stuff. So that is uh, fantastic to hear. I'm glad it's helpful, man. Every little bit helps. <laughs> Every little bit helps when we're trying to plug in to all this stuff. So yeah, we have so many projects. We got lots of projects to, to dive into. So I don't know, what do you guys wanna, wanna dive into? I mean, let me know. I am happy to facilitate and happy to uh, kind of let you guys drive the car. I'm sick of driving the car all the freaking time, man. You let me know what you want to do. I have been converted, though. I will say that I have been converted to uh, stopping with all the hand polishing and uh, going to the buffing wheel. Um, this buffing wheel is amazing, all right? So, like, here's this dull nastiness, you know? Dull, nasty, gross, gross. I'll give you a nice close-up of that here in a little bit. And... Uh, We'll get them all nice and shiny. Buff and wheel. Man, if you can get yourself just a six inch grinder and a set of, of polishing pads, you can jam, jam through stuff. Stuff that would take me, you know, two, three hours, four hours, depending on the part, to hand sand. I'm getting done in like 20 or 30 minutes. So, you know, I always talk about like, what are the tools that you really, really need when working on these bikes? If you're trying to do stuff kind of fast um, and you don't want to spend all day and you're not like totally OCD like me in a lot of ways, um, get yourself a little bench grinder and some polishing pads and some compound and you'll be able to crush it. Roger, we're all into bikes or we wouldn't be here, right? I'd be very surprised if uh, anybody who wasn't into motorcycles was checking out the stream. <laughs> that I don't think would make any sense at all. Oh shoot, I got one camera locked up on me. I'll have to figure that out. So I might be going one camera style today, which will be kind of interesting to do. Um, let's see, hey, I wonder if I can just reassign this actually. Let's go on the fly. See if I can mess with my OBS just a little bit. All right, give me one second here. Actually, BRB. You know what? I think I'm going to be able to do it. I think I can just switch back over to here and we are doing this live. I'm going to go into my settings here and see if I can just change this up on the fly. We're going to learn. Wow. Hey, Gordon. How are you, buddy? Ooh, God damn. His claws are sharp. His claws are sharp, man. Let's see if I can close this up. So there's that one. Is that the one? That's the one, baby. All right, we're back. <laughs> Figuring stuff out all the time, learning something new. Let's get over to the bench grinder. This is like my new best friend, my best friend in the whole world. This thing has changed my life. It really, really has. So here, let's take a look at where we're starting with stuff. All right, so here is kind of just a grungy, old cat. Hey, Gordon. Gordon, come here, buddy. What are you so sad for? This is Gordon. Look at Gordon. Isn't he precious? Look at this little kitty. It's a cross-eyed kitty. His name's Gordon. We picked him up next to some pumpkins, so we called him Gordon. Now let's get back to this. See all this tarnish and this oxidation that's going on here? We can knock this stuff out extremely fast, okay? extremely fast. I literally spent, I mean, I, th I think I spent three minutes on this one. I didn't even really try. I was just trying to see what kind of results I could actually get. 
and boom, it just became very apparent to me that I should always be using the buffing wheel. Now, I didn't use the coarse stuff. I just am using a white compound on this. Again, get that on there really nice. And let's go take a look at this grunginess here. Let's get rid of all this. Hope that's coming across on camera. Like there's a haze, there's a really bad haze all over this, all right? So let's just hit this a little bit. Key is not extreme pressure. And look, I just touched this. Here's where I stopped. I went about that far. And we're getting that mirror-like finish already on that. Now the, the, the tick, or the trip, the, oh my God, the tip I would give you is just use lots of compound, light pressure, and go really slow. You can't like power through stuff. You just gotta go slow, be kind of gentle with it. And there you can see, oh man, there's a really good comparison here. Here, let me actually, let's get a better look at this. I wanna really, I wanna show you this. So I'm gonna go over to camera B. I'm gonna grab this, we're gonna go live, going handheld because this is important. So here's the edge that we just did here. Let me get this thing to zoom there. There's the difference. That's a really good look at that. So that's that haze that I'm talking about right there. And I just touched that with the buffing wheel, just that little bit guys. And that is all knocked out. Like you watched it live, <laughs> okay? That's it, that's the comparison. We, li we literally just hit this edge and that's, that's the difference that we've gotten out of that. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, you know, I'm not building show bikes here. I just want a respectable, nice, clean bike and I wanna save as many original parts as I possibly can. I really don't, I'm, I'm, I wanna keep the original chrome. I wanna keep original finish on parts as much as I can. I wanna save original bolts. You know, I wanna do all that. Look at that. <laughs> I can sit here and just look at this all day. That's impactful, man. And what, I did that for 30 seconds? If that. You know, I could do a comparison side by side on time and try to do what I've been doing on my first two bikes, the 70CB and the 72CL, and I polished these all by hand. You know, like each one, I don't know, I wasn't keeping track of how long, but it took a hell of a lot longer than that. <laughs> hell of a lot longer, man. Yeah, Kevin, we can, we can save a lot of parts. Don't give up on your old parts, man. Oh, Roger. Yeah, no, I got, <laughs> Roger, I had to go through probably 12 lights to find these that are in this good of shape for this bike. <laughs> I've got a whole, I got a whole bin over there full of these that are really crap. So these are the good ones that I have, honestly. These are the good ones that I got, and they're going to go on the Apocalypse bike, all right? And, uh, uh I'll also clarify, it's like the apocalypse bike doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a bike used in the apocalypse. It really just means that I'm building this bike during what feels like the apocalypse. Does that make sense? Because <laughs> we're living in some crazy freaking times right now. Let me tell you, it's pretty nuts. Let's go back over here. Let's go back. Let's keep polishing on this, man. I'm, I'm super encouraged. Um, I will practice what I preach here as well and uh, put on my gloves put on a pair of gloves so your hands don't get all grimy and nasty right and um, there we go ready for your examination all right what the hell's the one that I was just working on I guess it doesn't matter because I need to do them all but whatever Again, you want to wear a mask as well. It's kind of tough for me to wear a mask uh, while I'm live streaming, but I'm not polishing aluminum here, so I'm, I think I can be okay with it. 
Well, let's kind of tackle this little edge here, see how we can do. Oh, God. If I could have all that time back that I spent hand polishing stuff, I could probably build an entirely new bike. Artistic license. That's a really good term, man. That's a good term. I like it. I dig it. I dig it, Roger. And Valhalla. Hell yeah. Well, jamming. Jamming. Cruising, even. I, I even dare say that we're cruising. I'm just going to go around this whole edge. Again, just compound, compound, compound. You start running into issues when you start running out of compound. That's when things start to go a little, things start blackening up, things start kind of smearing. Hold on to your part though, man, because they can fly out of your hand pretty easily. Man, I'm just working this part. Let me get you down even closer if I can. Let's get some action shots here. Oh yeah, the most thrilling live stream on YouTube, by far, by far. Working this part nice and slow. But don't push on here. Just let the pad do the work. I, that, I had to learn that lesson. I was like, oh, I'm gonna polish it. And you're driving into it. And then that's when you start getting those black marks and you start having having a few little issues. Now, are these lights perfect? No, they're not perfect, but neither am I. Oh, and neither are you. That's why you hold on to the part. No damage, that's a lucky break. Like, I don't, I'm not too hung up on like the, like some of these little bubbles. You see like this little nick, a little nick there. I'm, I'm not too bent out of shape by that nick. Yeah, Kevin, I mean, it's good enough. Like, is, I don't know if it would win an award at a, at a, you know, a motorcycle show or anything. Depends what kind of motorcycle show you're at. But um, I think for me, that's good enough. And I mean, anybody who's gonna come up to you, you know, when they're, they're looking at your bike and they're like, oh, what the hell is that? What's that, what's that little nick there, you know? Um, I mean, kind of step off, dude. See, see, now I forgot to add compounds. See how I'm starting to get this black kind of build up? Gotta go back, I gotta remember to add that compound, man. It's like kind of counterintuitive. You don't think you should have to add it all the time, but you really, really do. Gotta keep the compound flying. If you do get a little bit of black, it's not the end of the world. It'll wipe off. I found that just some more rubbing compound, like on a rag or another liquid, it will, will do a really nice job. Yeah, and this is like coming out beautifully. Getting down in some of these grooves is a little bit challenging from time to time. But what the hell else do we gotta do, you know? It's got all the character. <laughs> I'm with you, Kevin. I like the way you think, man. It's exactly it, man. I, the 72 CL, it has issues. It has little things that I know, you know, maybe aren't totally right. But that damn bike goes down the road and it runs and it starts and it does stuff. And I have fun with that bike. I mean, don't, you know, don't paralyze yourself with trying to make everything you know, so perfect. It's also a hell of a lot cheaper. It is also a hell of a lot cheaper to uh, just fix the parts that you got, all right? And not get too hung up on, you know, all of that. So, I mean, I feel like we got a pretty nice, pretty nice luster on that, wouldn't you say? I'm loving that. It's not checkbook restoration, it's hands-on refurbishment. Dude, you're, you're like dropping out all the freaking t-shirt designs tonight. 
Roger. <laughs> that would be awesome on a t-shirt. Um, next thing, I'm gonna do just a little bit of, of, uh, of hand polishing just to clean it up. So I used that to knock out most of it, right? And I'm just gonna go to, man, that light, I got this light in this new, new direction and I, I'm not a huge fan of where it is. Uh, Metal Renew, Wizards Metal Renew, right there. Um, I have Colonel Brassy, but I'm running really low on it. I'm running really low and I know I got wheels to do. So I want to save the old Colonel Brassy um, for some of that. Uh, so I'm going to use just a little bit of Wizards. And this stuff was pretty cheap. I'm, oh, this is $13.50. Still, that ain't, that ain't, you know, that ain't cheap. But I'm just going to clean these off. Just a little dab will do you. Dab will do you really, really good. I'll get you down here. I don't need to be on camera. You guys don't want to be looking at, looking at me. Let's get you on camera here. There we go. Bam. Just like that. Look at how freaking, I love this setup, man. So much fun. I'm just going to work this just a little bit. You know, I did that video where uh, I, I polished the, the for front fork sanctions. And uh, a guy commented, he's like, they look a little cloudy. You know, and I was just like, I was very nice in my reply. But at the same time, I'm just like, dude, did you see like where these started from? Mother's chrome polish. Is this it? Could I use this stuff, Scott? Mag and aluminum polish? I don't think that, I, I think they, there must be a separate chrome polish. Solvol, Autosol. God, we all have our favorite products. I need to like get my hands on some of these other products. I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I've been really, really pleased with anything with the name Wizards on it. Um, Wizard stuff is uh, pretty solid from what I've seen. This stuff, this freaking stuff is magic, magic stuff. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to use this. So there must be, there's a mother's chrome polish. I'll have to find some of that. Add it to the pile. <laughs> Add it to the pile of products um, that we got going on. And uh, let's just kind of knock this out. Let's get this as good as we can tonight. Like, do you guys mind, like, if I just do all of these lights tonight? Does that make for a really boring stream for everybody? Or, you know, because I kind of feel like, you know, this I, it's not really an, an instructional, you know, stream. I, I like to just kind of hang out. I kind of like just to hang out and, you know, hear what you guys are working on. and I get some stuff done. You're maybe getting some stuff done. Yeah, even just, just hitting this with a nice clean, remember, like, look at this, guys. You know, always rotate that rag. You don't want to be pushing this material back in to what you've been doing. Rotate the rag as soon as you start getting some gunk on it. Clean this thing up. I did have to buy, I did order, actually, a couple of two new front, front um, shafts. What were they called? Stems. I did get it. Um, fill your boots, Brian. Fill your boots. Is that a saying that I don't know what it means, Roger? I don't know. I mean, we can try it. We can try the, the mother's aluminum polish. I, I don't, I don't think I'm going to hurt anything with any kind of an, a, a polish like that. But I mean, look at this. I mean, this is pretty damn nice. See, it's got a little bit of weathering here. See, there's a couple little bumps. I don't really care because I do take a lot of time in polishing and waxing my bikes. Yeah, Kevin, there's slow parts to it. Oh, nice. Fill your boots. Knock yourself out. Man, dude, Roger, you're, filling, you're, you're just filling my brain full of, full of all kinds of knowledge tonight. I'm loving it. I got one little part here I want to knock out. <laughs> I mean, you know, as, as my father would say, he would say, that's better than a kick in the ass. You know, considering where we started and we, and we saw, you know, how bad this was. Now, you know, just for good measure, what I like to do, I, I just like protecting parts as, as much as I can. Polish, polish, polish. We put all the time into polishing it. Um, you know, I always like to just protect it just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna pull 
Again, I, that's probably too much. It's probably too much. I'll probably be able to use that on a couple of these lights tonight and knock those out. And we're just going to kind of turn this thing black with this stuff. I don't know if it'll go black because it's not really that dirty. Aluminum will turn black. Chrome usually doesn't turn um, black quite as bad as the aluminum. But this stuff, I don't know what the hell is in this stuff. But it just makes things just shine. It's like got just enough of like a, I don't know, fills it. I don't know if it like fills in little spots or, or what the magic is of this stuff. But all you got to do is just kind of wipe it on. I'm a believer, man. I'm a believer in the Wizards Metal Polish for motorcycles. I just think this stuff is amazing. A little ASMR action. There we go. Got that on there. And the great thing too about this stuff is you don't really have to let it sit for a long time. You just kind of get it on there and then you can Move it on out. Man, it feels so damn good to be back streaming, man. Having COVID sucked. Really sucked. But I'm back and I'm working. And we're getting all kinds of stuff done. We got a few viewers here. I kind of want to... Might be a thing tonight is that we take a break. And we take a look at the... the vi <laughs> look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. Dude. There's my head. There's my head. You can see my head in this filthy, filthy light. There's two down. Got one more to go. So here's side by side. This one I got to do yet, of course, and this one pretty much done. I'd say that that's a slight little difference there, wouldn't you say? I'd say that's a very noticeable difference. Okay, um, let's see. How do I do this? Again, I gotta stand up, I gotta walk over here, and I wanna, I, I'm just so proud of how this came out tonight that I just wanna, I wanna keep showing it off. Yeah, those stems, the genuine ones are definitely uh, expensive. Let's go here. Yeah, look at that. It's going to be so damn pretty. And you start adding front forks that are just gleaming onto this silver bike, dude. I'm so damn excited. I'm so damn excited. The blacked out badges. Loving it. And this is the best tank I've painted so far. I'm really proud of this. I did a bunch of Bondo, Prime paint, all of it. This thing is rock solid. Sorry, I'm just going to keep going back to it because I think it's beautiful. Um, I don't believe, Roger, that I got um, original you know, Honda stems. I, I have to check. I just found them and I bought them. Um, they weren't that expensive, so... I think they were twenty-seven fifty for a pair of them, so they're probably knockoffs. But um, Scott, are you the one who has a silver Honda as well? Are you the guy who is like, "Hey, I got to, we got twinsies now"? Um, yeah, dude, I'm I'm excited to see what this thing is going to look like on the bike. It's going to be amazing, and I think it's going to really start going fast as well. So here's one. Let's see. So here's another one we got to do. You know, this one I could do just a little, I could buff this one just a little bit more to get it there, which I may do. But here's the dirtiest one of the group. Like this almost looks like it was spray painted gray. Let's knock this one out. Let's bring this baby back to life. Let's bring it back to life. Should we bring it back to life? Let's freaking do it, man. Let's do it. My, uh, my bench grinder likes to kind of slide around a little bit, um, just vibration. 
So I'm going to try this. I might have to tilt you just a little bit. And then we'll get to work. We'll clean this bad boy up. Oh, Red CV and Candy. There's another Scott who was in the comments um, talking about, dude, we got twinsies. And I was like, hell yeah. And then can you guys hear me okay when the uh, bench grinder is uh, rolling? Hopefully, because I'm sharing all kinds of wisdom and, and, and life lessons. Again, nice and light. Don't push. Nice and light, let the pad do the work. Oh, there it went. That's okay. Broke the cable, that's too bad. That ain't nothing we can, we can fix that up later. I was thinking I started to see these little black lines start and I was like, oh, I need my compound, I need my compound. And look at that. God damn, this is amazing. This is absolutely, I'd probably have four or five bikes done by now if I would not have uh, hand sanded every damn thing on those other two bikes. Because that took an incredible amount of time. An incredible amount of time. Oh, Jesus. This is just so beautiful. And these pads are cheap. You know, 15, 20 bucks. You get a whole set of them. I mean, I think probably in the long run, it's got to be cheaper than sandpaper. Because sandpaper is really expensive. Especially for how much sandpaper you need to do that. I did that whole sandpaper video and you know what? I barely limped through the end on uh, the 72 with all that sandpaper that I had bought on that. Oh good, the sound's good, awesome. Lab Rat, how you doing buddy? Thanks for joining the stream. We're just cleaning up head, uh, head, cleaning up blinkers. That's all we're doing. Again, YouTube's most exciting stream ever. But can you just believe this difference in this part right now? I mean, we've well, we have hardly been doing anything. <laughs> been working on this for five minutes. Not, not this part. I mean, I think even combined doing all these lights, it's like five minutes on this buffing wheel. And then maybe another five minutes hand polish. Yeah, just gotta hold on. Like you need a, there, there's, there is a little bit of artistry to this. You don't wanna push it hard. So you wanna hold it light in your hand so it kind of floats but you don't want to drop the part like it just did a little while ago because then you're smashing shit up and it just don't work out for anybody at the end of the day, does it? When you start wrecking parts. But again, this is coming out beautiful. I haven't done, of course, this piece right here. <laughs> compound, compound, compound. Don't forget the compound. Yeah, Scott, you're right. It's it's really cheap, like 50 bucks. You can get yourself a grinder and wheels. And it's a lifetime investment. I mean, you'll have to buy new pads after a while, but man, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do a whole bike with a set of pads and then get a new set of pads for each bike or something like that. Yeah, it's really, really cheap. I found this, this bench grinder on a rummage sale for Lab rat, I think we've all lost our grip from time to time. The worst thing that I did is that I lost my grip uh, polishing a front fork sanction and uh, hit the ground and chipped it out. I felt, I was so pissed after I did that. And then I had to find a replacement and, and all of that. That was not that long ago that I did that. Luckily it was not on a live stream. 
But I ended up finding another sanction and, and all of that. Just remember, guys, everything I'm doing, we're live, baby. We're live. And if you, if you want step-by-step -step stuff, you know, I'm trying to do videos kind of in conjunction with the stuff I'm covering on the live stream. So if I'm doing it on the live stream, chances are that there's a full step-by-step -step kind of a video on my YouTube channel. You know, because it's all stuff that, that I've done at least once before. Yeah. I mean, this is just, I mean, this is almost as nice as, as, uh, as sanding. I do enjoy the process and the reward that you get out of sanding. But as far as saving yourself a ton of time, it's a pretty beautiful method. Just trying to get down in here a little bit. Got a little bit. This white, I, I don't know what it is. I just call it white compound. It's damn good stuff. Again, I'm trying not to like be so picky. Sometimes I just like, I slow myself down by being so, you know, oh, it's gotta, it can be better, it can be better, it can be better, it can be better. And sometimes it's just kind of futile because I took, I, I, I took the time to like, I took the time to like polish the sanctions on my first bike, the, the 70 CB. And I tell you what, like after, you know, a few months, you know, of uh, riding and doing stuff. I mean, they were all pretty much kind of not cloudy, but they're dirty, you know? Trevor, hey, thanks so much, Trevor. Great job on your, on your work, man. I'm restoring motorcycle parts myself and sanding out pitting imperfections is ridiculously tedious. Dude, it's freaking, te it's really tedious, man. This is not stuff for, uh, you know, impatient people. You, you got to be patient. You got to work your way through the process for sure. Um, really, really, really important, man. Thanks for the, thanks for the, thanks for the, uh, the, the comment, man. I, I really appreciate that. It's awesome. Got Roger given the choice of watching delusional vandals building bikes from nice original bikes to ridiculous and practical cafe racers or watching you polish up parts. I'm voting for the latter. Thanks, Roger. Man, it breaks my heart when I see people chopping the back ends off of these old vintage bikes. I think some of the cafes are definitely really cool. Um, I think there's, there's cool stuff happening there, but I, I hear you, man. Um, it's tough. Let's go back to the Wizards and let's just kind of clean this up. Again, I, I want to do a nice job, but I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, it's a, it's, it's a practical bike. I want to be riding these bikes. See, there you go. There's that black again. Rotate your rag, move to a new spot, and just kind of keep working it. I really enjoy the part restoration process. Um, I, I love bringing these old parts back to life. Um, I, I get great satisfaction out of it. I need to learn to enjoy working on engines. I need to learn how to appreciate wiring a motorcycle <laughs> you know what i mean um i love just restoring these old parts i love sandblasting i love painting um i like the like the tank you know like where's the can, can i see yeah like that oh god guys i'm so happy with how that uh with how uh, that tank came out and the side covers and the bucket and everything yeah, lab rat, you can without cutting them off. I see a lot of people cutting them off, though, and putting the hoops on them. And to each their own, I am not being critical of my fellow man in any way, shape, or form, okay? Um, it's a, a, to each their own, but, man, I, I love kind of saving these old bikes. Like, like, there's a term I saw somebody used. Oh, God, what was it? It was like a rescue or something, it wasn't rescue, but it was an old bike that they brought him back. I wish I could remember what term somebody used. And I was like, yeah, that, that is exact. A survivor. That's what it was. The survivor. That was the term that the guy used. And I was like, yeah, that's uh, pretty accurate. 
these survivor bikes. You bring them back and you save them. So, but to each their own. Um, there are some pretty darn cool cafes out there. I mean, people are building amazing things now. Um, you know, access to tools, access to information, you know, all of it. I mean, this stuff is doable by anybody. Um, and that's kind of why I really like the motorcycle stuff because it's like, Literally anybody can do it. Anybody can do this stuff. Um, you don't need a lot of room. Again, I built the 72 CL in a spare bedroom in my house. You know, I didn't have anything crazy going on there. Yeah, Scott, I painted that myself. I painted that all myself here uh, over the last week. If I didn't show you, maybe you joined the stream a little bit late. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to show it off because I'm really proud of how this all came out. Uh, painted the badges, I blacked out the badges, did all of that, painted it, absolutely beautiful. Headlight bucket came out flawless, it's gonna be beautiful. So the reason why I painted the headlight bucket is because on a 70, the headlight buckets did match um, the other paint scheme. There's the fork here. Clear coated it in uh, in 2K, which came out great. Tank's full of vinegar. I'm still working on some of the rust, but it's almost knocked out. That's what she looks like up close. Have, I haven't wet sanded it. I haven't done anything really with it yet. It's just kind of curing. I'm gonna let her sit for a long time and just let it cure. So I probably won't wet sand it until you know, it's like the night before I go and put it back on the bike. But, you know, I talking to, to, to one, of my, one of my buddies about what to do with these badges. And um, he, he said, he was like, dude, you should black them out. Black them out. <laughs> and uh, I was a little skeptical. And I went for it. And uh, they're, they're killer, man. Had a little black paint pen and uh, just worked it through or the syringe kind of technique. Filled those all in. It's gonna be great. Yeah, and Scott, dude, awesome. It's um, it was all, you know, the the word you know that people hate is rattle can. Um, I sprayed those out of a rattle can. The same process that I used um, in the video series, painting the the red seventy two, uh, except I slowed down my spray motion a little bit. So I think I refined kind of how how I'm painting. Yeah, lab rat. It's just it's kind of a classy look um, when 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 it all kind of matches. And I think on this this silver aluminum black, I'm thinking about doing a black wrapped CL exhaust and then a like a matte black muffler uh, setup because I do not have original mufflers for this bike, um, and I really don't want to buy them. I, I, I I'm kind of over them. I kind of did that once, so I might do something a little bit different with the pipes. We'll see, we're a long freaking ways away uh, from that. Long ways away from that. Yeah, Scott, it can be done. You can do all this stuff. Um, and then I, I tell you what, that, that 2K clear um, is, is amazing stuff. Um, worth every penny. It's a little bit expensive. Oh wait, that's an, that's an old piece. Where's my new piece? Oh man, lost my piece. I'm gonna have to tear another piece off of here. This stuff is like, I don't know. It's precious stuff, man. You don't wanna waste it. Yeah, Triumph and Norton. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's it's you know Honda didn't have a have a silver for sure. Uh, I'm going out uh, kind of off the reservation just a little bit there, um, but that's okay. I mean, the whole idea of this bike was to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, you know, again, one of my friends too, I was like, oh no, I'm just gonna leave it alone. He's like, no, Brian, this is, you're supposed to, you gotta push yourself on this one. Don't go falling back to stock, you know, do different stuff. And, you know, I, I really like those, those kind of pushes that you get from your, from your friends, right? They're like, hey, dude, come on, come on, come on. Stop being comfortable, do something, you know, push yourself a little bit. Um, no, it wasn't marbles paint. Um, again, guys, you, you're gonna laugh. Um, and uh, I may lose some credibility, but for those of you who have watched the series, um, that whole YouTube series, I, I really debated whether or not I was going to paint the engine. So I had bought a bunch, like three, I had three cans of 
VHT engine primer, okay? And I had three, or no, I had one can of engine primer and three cans of the VHT aluminum engine paint. And I was just kind of hanging out in my garage and I was kind of looking, I was gonna paint it black. I was just gonna paint the whole thing gloss black, but I just, I couldn't commit. Like, you know, I just had this hesitation about not doing it. So I started looking at the paint that I had and I saw those three cans there. And I was just like, huh. I wonder what that would look like. So I grabbed a, a little piece of metal, I primed it out, painted it, I looked at it, and I was like, damn, it's not silver, but it's got a, like a little bit of a pearl in it, just enough of a pearl in it. Um, and I just kind of went for it, man. Ah, special edition Honda. <laughs> That's fucking cool, man. Yeah, classy. It's going to look classy. It's, it's going to, I, I think it's going to be kind of hard to screw up. And I committed on the CL tank. That's that black tank um, that, that I showed you guys. That was just, I mean, it was just full of rust, full of rust. I'm saving that tank. I cannot believe that I was able to bring that back. So, you know, as long as your tank doesn't have holes in it, I mean, try to clean them out, man. Try to clean them out. I went through about four, four rounds of vinegar. All right, and I'm on, I'm on round four now of vinegar, and it's pretty good. On rounds two and three, I took 100 washers, put them in the tank, and I basically just like swung around the tank, rattling out any, anything I could get until that all kind of came out clear. Uh, that was actually a really good aerobic workout, actually. I'm um, doing that. And uh, then now I'm back to vinegar. So after this vinegar one, I'm actually going to go, because I'm going to be really close to being totally clean. Um, then I'm going to go, I'm going to fill it with Evaporust. I'm going to put it on the shelf until I'm ready, um, until I'm ready to get it on the bike. It'll just sit on the shelf full of Evaporust. That's the plan. And that should knock out any kind of anything else that's in there. But I do want to Knock that out. Oh, I did uh, use acetone in washers as well. So, um, so in between, let's see, I did two rounds of vinegar and then acetone in washers. Like I filled it like maybe a quarter full and then put a bunch of washers in it, swung that thing around like a crazy person, almost had a heart attack and died. Um, and then went back to another round of vinegar and I think that's where I'm at now with it, but. Vinegar's cheap. Um, you just can't reuse the vinegar. You know, it seems to kind of fall apart after a little while. It kind of loses its potency. There we go, guys. One, two, and a three. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, Roger, I thought about that, but I have an all-wheel drive Subaru. Um, so that wasn't an option for me. <laughs> Got an all-wheel drive Subaru, so that just wasn't wasn't gonna work um, for me. I, I, the thought definitely crossed my mind, and uh, I actually do have a I do have an idea to make like a little bit of a mount, like a, like just like a two by four frame, and then like a round wheel, um, something that I could like tie to a motor, like an electric motor. I'm kind of looking for just a cheap electric motor I could plug onto something. So I got some ideas to do that. Um, but yeah, I guess you could just strap it to the tank of your car. I saw one guy, one guy's YouTube channel, uh, Kentucky Yankee. Uh, he's kind of fun to check out. Go look up Kentucky Yankee. He had an old cement mixer that he uh, kind of, he didn't bungee strap it. He had the ratchet ties and he ratchet tied it to his cement mixer and he just turned on his cement mixer and that rotated the tank around to, to, to knock all that stuff out. So uh, I thought that was pretty smart, but I don't have a cement mixer. So, um, you know, it's, well, how am I going to do? So I did it manually. Okay. It's just, like I always fall back and do it manually. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> do four at a time oh my god that would be something I, you know I, I would hope my my wife would come home from work and see me doing something like that uh, she would she would lose her mind actually my wife has just texted me I gotta check this real quick what she's saying 
Why are cats eating spider plants? And can it be harmful? Um, no, our cat, so we have this cat, Gordon, who you met earlier, uh, he's eating these spider plants and apparently it's a hallucinogenic to cats. So Gordon is basically um, just tripping balls all the time because he just constantly eats our spider plants. I'm not going to criticize Gordon for that. Not one bit. All right. Live your life. Live your life, young man. Do it. All right, let's knock this last one out and then we'll move on to something else. Nice light pressure. I'm gonna learn from my mistakes. I'm gonna grab this wire this time. Yeah, all these lights are in pretty good shape. This one's got a little bit of a scratch in it right here on the end. That's probably the worst one out of the batch. I didn't notice that before, so it's making me angered. Yeah, my cat is freaking addicted to my spider plants, man. And the other thing that's cool about all this too, like there you go, there's that difference again, look at that. It's absolutely incredible. It's like, it's one piece at a time. You know, it literally is just one piece at a time. And it's one step closer every single time that you work your way through a part. This one's polishing up really fast. Look at that. That's crazy. Compound, compound, compound. Moving this bench grinder down here was like the best decision. Not the best decision of my life, right? I've made a few better ones, but um, it's a game changer for sure, man. I'm moving through, moving through stuff a lot quicker now. Because this would have been, just to do these lights and, and like say the sanctions, that would have been a whole week. That would have taken me like each night a few hours to bust all this out. So it's pretty incredible, actually. Carlos. <laughs> it's like ASMR to you, man. Me too, man. I love it. I just love polishing stuff. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, it's, it's ASMR. I mean, I could shut the hell up, too. So that you hear, well, let's, let's give Carlos a little ASMR. Not too bad. Oh man, Carlos, you have no idea. You had no idea, man. I seriously thought about just doing an ASMR channel <laughs> where it would just be like um, hearing the swing of the ratchet and you know stuff like that. Okay, I was seriously like, man, I could just do that. I wonder if people would like that. Oh, what am I doing? I'm skipping a step. I'm skipping a step. <sighs> Skipping a step. I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm getting way too excited about having my fourth blinker done. All right. Let's go back over here. Let's knock this thing out, man. Again, wizards. Wizards for the win. We're jamming on this. Kevin, what do you got? Really random channel. RCC. He restores motorcycles. Beautiful. I've heard of that guy. I think I may, may have watched some of his videos um, at one point. Um, is there a guy who like just restores old tools too, 
who, who never says anything at all. He just shows everything on, on the deal. It's pretty fascinating. My pop and I were sandpapering a bike frame super long. Then he got exactly the same edit set up with four different polishing wheels. Yeah, it's, it's a game changer, man. Totally has changed um, everything. Oh, thanks, dude. Thanks, Kevin. It's my Corona beard. Um, it's kind of an experiment. I've never had, like, the opportunity before to, like, be um, looking kind of, I don't know, don't want to say grungy or just kind of not kind of kept up, I guess. Because uh, in my professional life, I'm a, I'm a, a, a kind of a, a public speaker and I talk at events and, and do stuff like that. And I've always had to look kind of clean, you know. I haven't tried Scotch-Brite wheels for metal prep yet. I have not tried that. Thanks for the tip, Trevor. I gotta remember that one. But in a weird way, like coronavirus kind of provided me with this opportunity to just kind of try it. Because everything I'm doing is via webinars now. It's, it's all online, you know. Not really doing any in-person stuff anymore. And probably won't for a while. Um, so I was like, screw it. I've never had a chance to do it. Let's do it. So, and it's coming out okay. So I'm glad you think so. Um, my wife doesn't seem to mind it. So that's a plus two. Um, it's just something different, man. It's a different year. So why not do something a little different, you know? Scotch bright wheels for metal prep. So Trevor, for, for metal prep, um, like, like what are you referring to? Like metal prep before paint? Metal prep before... I don't know, welding things? Like, what, what are you talking about? Elaborate just a little bit. I keep forgetting which one of these. I don't remember using this much of this product. Did I waste that much of this product? That was very foolish of me. And you guys should have called me out in the comments for that, saying, dude, what are you doing using that much of that product for that little light? I'm just going to keep polishing this. All right, guys, so we pretty much, okay, we've been streaming for an hour and three minutes, all right? In an hour and three minutes, let's just say, so like the little introduction, you know, where we went through this new freshly painted motorcycle parts, dun, 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 right? I'm going to keep showing them off because I'm so freaking happy with how they came out. Um, we did all four lights in an hour on a buffing wheel. <laughs> I'm serious, man, like... It's got to be a quarter of the time, at least, from doing this by hand. This, this buffing wheel is just such a game changer. I mean, it makes a lot of things kind of possible. It makes things doing things kind of possible. It doesn't have to be such an arduous task. I wish Tula Tom was here tonight because he would probably fall flat on the floor um, just being like, dude, I can't believe you did that. Steven, can't wait to start polishing, man. It feels really good. Mm, like before polishing aluminum. Yeah, okay, Trevor, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I guess I just had that kind of thick, heavy one. Uh, kind, of, kind of more of, I don't know if it's canvas or whatever, but it's pretty rigid um, that I started with. But yeah, yeah, Carlos, buffing well is the way to go. It took me, it only took me two years to like give up on uh, kind of the granola granola oh we're getting a what are we getting here kind of you know guys i'm in the u.s so we have some craziness going on right now in the u.s so um kind of trying to keep my ear to the rail a little bit to see what's happening with our election um nothing no new developments this is going to go on and on for a long time i think but it's good to be paying attention to what's going on in your world. Let's see, you wanna make sure I'm not missing. I always like, there comes a time in the chat where I start to miss some messages. Like, I don't know if there's like a, a cache that I'm supposed to be emptying or something, but sometimes it just kinda stalls out. Guys, I got four lights. I got four freaking lights that are gonna look beautiful. Now, question for you guys. Can you buff out the lenses as well? I was thinking about this the other night. 
I was like, is it possible to buff out the lenses? Because sometimes the lenses, um, look at that. Wow, look at that. That is incredible, minus the one little ding right there. It's pretty incredible. What do you guys think? Can I buff out the plastic lenses? You know, I'll grab one and show you what I'm talking about. I have plenty of them. I've got a cracked one here that we could try on. But see, these are always kind of dull and dirty. I'm just wondering if I could hit this on a buffing wheel as well and shine some of these up. Like this one, this could be a good sacrificial one because this one's cracked pretty bad right here. I probably wouldn't use that one. I should actually double check and make sure. And I've got all these. I got one, one fully intact. Two fully intact. That one's intact. That's three intact. Let's go like this. That's all those parts. And then here, yeah, this one's a little scuffed up. I wonder if I have another one. But this would be another good candidate. So that one's got scratches all up on it. Like, I'm wondering. I wonder if you could get that out. Oh, I have one more over here. Oh, God. One, I hope this one's in, in a little bit better shape. So I got all four of the seals, weather seals that I need. Got all those. I got bulbs. So wait, what am I doing? Oh yeah, this is the scratched one. <laughs> and there's my nuts and bolts. Yeah. Here we go, these are the four. Those are the four that I'm gonna use. And we've got one badly scratched one, okay? And then this one, we could just kind of go to, this one's got some scratches in it too, not crazy. You know what, I'm going to do this. I don't like the, ah, I'm torn guys. Let's go with the cracked one first. Let's just see what the hell happens. All right, sacrificial here. Let's just do a part of it and see what happens. Auto Sol, is that what it was, Roger? Oh, somebody said, should be able to, if car headlights can be buffed, I'm guessing indicator lenses can be. Yeah, Trevor, I think so. Uh, tricky, Solval Auto Sol buffs plastic lovely. I gotta, I, okay, this is like the second or third time you've mentioned that on a stream. So I'm gonna need to get some. Not seeing a huge difference here. Again, this one's cracked. It's this is just kind of for for giggles. Let's just work our way all the way around it. Yeah, I don't think this is the right product for this. It's kind of drying onto the plastic. Yeah, so this doesn't really work. Yeah, it more kind of embeds itself in the surface. Ah, where's the camera? Kind of embedding itself in the in the surface. So I don't think I don't think that's a an appropriate deal. Yeah, let's not waste time doing that. We got plenty um, going on right here, but I feel really good about this. We've got all four of our lights. I got four lenses. I may go check out the Autosol um, to try and figure that stuff out. 
All right. Next up. Reach into the bat of Evaporust and pull out my, my headlight ring. This is something I could absolutely um, clean up very, very, very quickly tonight. Um, uh, like the, this has been sitting in Evaporust for two or three days now and pretty much just cleaned up all of the rust on the inside of the ring. Yeah, yeah, too much heat. Hand polish works better. Yeah, I would say that that would be an accurate statement, Roger. Too much heat because it did uh, totally just melted it. Again, that was, we're, just, we're just trying stuff, guys. I mean, it, 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 it ain't hurting nothing to do it. But this bad boy, this bad boy we can polish up. And it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's one that's in pretty good shape, okay? It's in pretty good shape from where we were, or it's the best one that I have. Let, let me just put it that way. It's the best one that I've got at this time. Oh, shoot. Let's check the browser. See if we got any new requests for the Keep On Wrenching group. If you guys are not members of the Keep On Wrenching group yet, please go join, all right? Keep On Wrenching community group. And let's see if anybody's been posting anything. Terrence, he's been going off. He's doing all kinds of stuff. Man, we're just sharing our projects, uh, sharing tips, tricks, all kinds of stuff. Um, doing all kinds of stuff. So here, here, George, he cleaned up his stuff there. So, Kevin, I've noticed that, um, yes, yes, it is a Bell's Too Hearted. <laughs> Bell's Too Hearted, it is my, uh, that, that is my go-to beer. That's the, that's the house beer. So I always drink. And then why do bikers put tape on their headlights? They plan on going through Mad Max City Raids. Apparently they did it, um, this is what I heard, and if somebody else knows as well, um, it was mostly for racing. Um, uh, they, they did it, like, back in the old days. They, they taped them up for that. Trevor, awesome. Let's get you in into the group here. Easy, easy. I uh, didn't answer any of the membership questions, but I'll give you a pass, dude. I don't care. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, it's just a fun group. So please contribute. Um, I share project, uh, like process, the progress that I'm making on stuff um, like here's the first reveal kind of picture of that tank oh my god i love that tank so much it's so pretty um and then uh we've got here what's going on george he got an owner's manual he's showing some of that stuff off look at this glenn not perfect but fun look at this bike looks like in great freaking shape and uh yeah this is kind of what we're doing in the group so if you haven't joined the group yet um, please do, man. Um, we have a lot of fun and we're really chill. All right. Uh, we don't have like a lot of, uh, I don't think we have any like super, um, you know, super, super, um, I don't know. I'm trying to find the right word for it, but you know, we have good people in the, in, in the group. Okay. Uh, everybody's pretty friendly. Everybody gets along really, really well. But yeah, we're just sharing all of our different, oh, this was cool. I wish you guys could hear this. Got this bad boy running. Scott. Scott, is that the same Scott in chat? That's your baby. How can I, I wish I could turn this up a little bit. I'm on max. Go to the Facebook page or the Facebook group uh, join and get in on it. Man, that is one clean bike. I, I also like it when the the fork ears and the extenders are all that same color too. I, the gators are okay, but I do like those those metal tins. Man, your handlebars look like they're in great shape. That chrome looks beautiful. That seat, shoot, man. How much work did you put in on that? That's That's, that's awesome stuff. So yeah, we're, we're sharing in here, man. We're helping each other out. You know, David, he has, she's struggling with something and, and people dive in and throw out suggestions and we help people out. It's, um, it's a really, really fun, fun little group. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, kind of keeps me, keeps me motivated for sure on all of it. Um, 
Kevin, you'd see old race cars with tape on the headlights to stop the lenses cracking, but it was wishful thinking. Yeah, yeah, the, oh, yeah. So it is kind of a race thing, I'm assuming. It just got carried over into it um, with, with the tape. So let's take this thing over to the wheel. To the wheel of fortune. Like, oh my God, I would again be hand polishing all of this until I got smart and started doing this. Little ASMR action for Carlos. Oh, oh God. I, I just got a sneak peek at it, guys. It's like incredible. All right, let's see what our results are, man. Yeah, Trevor, welcome aboard, man. Welcome aboard. Welcome to the group. Um, let's see. I got a stupid alert pop up. Let's get rid of that. Well, let's take a look. Ooh, that's a squeaky bench. So all I did is I went around one edge of this. You guys see that okay? You should be able to see that really clearly of how that one pass... Just magically clean this up, man. So I gotta go back and do all this. Is just a little bit of little bit of residue there, but look, wipe it right off. It'll come right off. That's one pass. That's barely even trying, guys. That's like barely even trying on this on this thing. I'm I'm really gonna strive to keep the original bucket and an original ring on this bike. Um, the other ones, my other bikes, I have pretty much, on both of them, I put the new CMC bigger buckets on it, but I'm going to try to keep it all the same on all that. So that's a hell of a difference. And again, that was one pass. Like, how long was I doing that? Like two minutes? Maybe two minutes? There, oh, there. There you can really see it. See that? Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, we're gonna keep working this. Let's go back, let's keep working this. Let's get you back in the action here. Now I can go to town because I'm not doing a comparison. Now we're just polishing. Again, nice light pressure, not pushing it into the wheel. And then after this, what we can do is we can assemble this headlight, get it installed on the bucket, And get things really starting to come together, man. 
I, the kind of my, my goal I have right now is to just kind of get the front end built. Get the front end built, get the, get the forks together, get those on. But the, I'm waiting to get the, the frame sandblasted. I need to do that. It was really kind of cold and miserable uh, where I live this last weekend. And that's kind of an outdoor job. So I didn't really have kind of the gumption to go dive into that. So I've got to get the frame done. Once I get the frame done, um, then we're going to be going, going freaking bonkers on, on starting to get that front end back together. Let's do some of this inside edge here. Oh, oh God, oh God. Oh, that's so sad guys. I might've just wrecked that wheel. No, it didn't. It didn't break, dude. It did not break. How did that not break? All right, let's keep going. I thought for sure that was gonna break. Nope, nope, it did not. So I'm gonna hold on to this a little bit tighter now. There, we got a good shot of that? Oh, a little too close. Man, I thought for sure this was gonna get all smashed up. Man, I really lucked out there. I gotta just remember to keep looking at the piece. I get kind of distracted sometimes. It's like I'm trying to look for chats and stuff. Safety first, guys, safety first. This is coming out great. This is coming out so good. You know, there is something to it as well. Like when the metal gets warm, man, this compound just starts to just melt away, man. Getting that piece nice and warm does make a huge difference. I'm trying to remember who was, who was talking to me about, oh, Tula Tom. Tula Tom was talking to me about that. He said that some people actually warm, like preheat their parts a little bit. This is coming out freaking beautiful, guys. This is coming out really, 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 really nice. Yeah, super lucky, Lab Rat. Super lucky. Luckily, if, if badness did happen, I got another one that I'd be able to work on. This one just happens to be in pretty good shape. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. We're doing this stuff live. Ain't no edits here. Yeah, this is gonna be great. And then I think what I'm gonna do on the opposite side, on the inside of the ring, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it, I got the wire wheel on the opposite side over here. I'm just gonna wire wheel that, make sure I knock out any rust that's in that spot. Yeah, I see what happened. I got caught up on one of these, um, one of the bolt holes. I just wasn't watching quite close enough. So again, just always be really careful. Oh man, this is gonna be, whoa, 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 look at this. Still got a little bit of work to do. But that's where we're getting. <laughs> that is going to be incredible once we hand sand this. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. All right, let's keep going. It is so satisfying. Yep, just, I just got to be a little bit more aggressive with the compound, just a little bit more. and do each section. It's like I'm doing like three, four inches at a time. Can't keep it down. There we go. Man. <laughs> Incredible, man. Again, this, this probably would have been a whole night of a uh, project all unto itself. You know, just trying to polish this up. And 10 minutes later, we're going to have ourselves a really nice, really nice, actually, 
headlight ring. It's still got, it's got, you know, it still has like a little bit of a patina. Let's see, so it's gonna go, duh, 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 trying to look at the part here. Yeah, it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be beautiful, man. I was thinking about doing like a little bit of chicken wire mesh or something on there. Like instead of the tape, maybe do like some chicken wire mesh or something on the inside. That'd be kind of fun. On the silver bike. Might mean up the silver just a little. I'm gonna move over here just a little bit. And I just wanna do as, like, ah, I wonder if I can. Nah, I'm probably not gonna be able to do it. Eh. Yeah, let's not do that. Seems a little dangerous to do that. I already got away with one, so let's not push our luck at all here in the situations. All right, guys, so what have you been working on? What have you been working on on your bikes? What, what projects do you got going on? So now we got to go back to ASMR polishing. And do the same process, wizards. This is gonna be great. Yeah, this is fantastic. It's like night and day. Trevor, how did you go with using vinegar or rust removers with flash rusting? Um, well, I try not to keep the tanks empty like as little as possible um, to avoid flash rusting. Um, I haven't had, really the tank just hasn't been empty. Got one nick in it here when I, on that little, little issue that I had on the wheel, but it's not bad, that'll rub, that'll rub out. Um, so I just never have my tanks empty. That's how I try to avoid the flash rusting. Um, that's kind of how I deal with it. Um, the vinegar, I went with vinegar because it was really cheap and that tank was really bad. Like I didn't want to take evapor, like a, you know, $30, $40 worth of evaporust and put that in that tank because that, that, I think that tank was bad enough to where it probably would have ruined that whole batch of evaporust. That's the thing. Evaporust is is pretty expensive, right? And um, so that's why I went with vinegar on that one. I added some salt to um, the, the mix on this last one as well. I added about half a cup of salt um, to the vinegar mixture. I'd read online that that can help kind of get things going. Man, look at how, look at how beautiful this is gonna be. This is gonna be fantastic, look at that. Bam, it's hard to show you. Man, this camera zooms tough. It's like that. It's all coming out, baby. It's all coming out. I think that's going to be good. I think that's going to be good on that. And again, I lost my pink. I'm going to have to just go buy more. I'm starting to run low on the Wizards Metal Polish. But I got this stuff for my first bike. I've had it for two years, so I shouldn't complain too much. So I did, I'm gonna end up doing like three bikes with one box. This stuff is gonna be like kind of the game changer for this piece for sure. Like for sure. This is gonna do great. It's like that. Yeah, I just, I th this, Trevor, the tank was so bad. Um, I did, I honestly, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to save it. So I threw everything I had at it, everything. I mean, I even did acetone washers. Um, and I think I dropped like half, half a gallon or a gallon of acetone in it, shook it. Pretty much all afternoon, I was just, every time I walked by it, I'd just shake it, let it sit there. This chrome ring is gonna look so damn good. 
on that bucket. We just got to get the light bulb put back in it, and that's going to be our, our next task because there are some little nuances to that. Yeah, it's looking really good. It's looking really good, guys. It's looking really good. This is going to be great. Let's just sit on here just for a little while. Find myself a least dirty rag that I can find. People must be a little sick of the polishings. We just dropped a ton of viewers. But I'm glad you guys are still hanging out, man. Glad y'all are still hanging out with me. Because we're going to put this headlight back together. I'm going to put it all back together. Look at that. That's pretty. That is really pretty. Victor, your videos have helped me a ton with my 73 Honda CL350. Thank you so much. Victor, absolutely my pleasure. I'm so glad that the videos are useful, honestly. Uh, the only reason why I even got into this and why I started making the videos in the first place is because when I was building my first bike, a lot of the videos didn't exist or they weren't the yeah you couldn't see everything or it didn't answer all the all the newbie questions and stuff um so when i got to my second bike i started making them and it's like comments like yours man um that chats that come through like that that uh i don't know man they make my day so thanks victor i'm glad they're useful man um they're gonna be around forever and hopefully they help out a lot of people steven can't get the main bolt out of the swing arm is that the one with the grease fitting on the end? I think it is, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, deep creep, for sure. I would probably maybe heat it up a little bit. Does the swing arm move freely? Is it moving freely? Can it, like it's moving? You just can't get it out? Um... Yeah, I mean, it could be a few things. It's probably just, just needs a little bit of persuasion. Um, one thing that you could do is find a, like a socket that fits kind of around the end of that um, so that you don't bash in the grease fitting. That grease, I, I think what you're talking about, see if I can find one. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, I'm thinking of something totally different here. No, that's right, yeah. Where the hell is it? I got one over here. I got one over here. Give me a second. I desperately need to organize my parts a little bit better. It's a mess. There it is. I think you're talking about one of these, right? It's kind of got the, the rounded end on it like that. And on this side, you got this. It's a little grease fitting. Might need to just get it kind of moving. There's grease fitting on this side too, here. I recall, you know, I might even have been removing this one little sidetrack here. But once you get this bolt off, bolt and the washer off, I think what I did is I grabbed. What was it? Yeah. Got a 10 millimeter socket, is what I used. And that fit right on top here. Here, let me do this. So, this is in the bike. So, you don't want to go bashing on this, this fitting here, right? That 10 millimeter, I mean, you could use a shorty too. I found that yeah, it could hold on to this a little bit better. And that gave me enough push to get it out of there. You know, yours is probably just as crusty and bad as this one, right? You know, it's probably pretty bad. Um, but yeah, a 10 millimeter, I believe that's what this is. Da -da 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 -da. Yep, 10 millimeter. Fits right on there. Shouldn't bash up your threads too bad. But maybe give it some persuasion. Um, but I think a little deep creep would work really, really well. Um, and some heat, 
some heat might work too. Went through one pair of gloves. I gotta get, let my hands breathe a little bit. Getting hot. This looks really good. <laughs> Look at that. Trevor, truth be told, I bought all the vinegar at a store uh, to fill a large bin and you put most of a full bike in it. Holy crap, would you have like a tub? <laughs> I did find, oh, I should show you guys this actually. Um, I did find like, I think the perfect bin for submerging, um, submerging wheels. And they are called, what in the hell was it called? You grab the receipt. Man, they're perfect. And I'll show you here in just a second. They were called. Tub Trugs Fes Flexible is what they are. Is what they are here. Tub Rug, Tub Trugs dot com. Okay. And it's called the Gorilla Tub. Large, shallow Gorilla Tub is what I got. And it fits the wheels perfectly. Steven, have you tried that? Have you tried that 10 millimeter? Let me, God, I don't know if I have the length to get over there with my camera. Let me see if I can get over there. Bear with me. Hold your lunch, guys. Hold your lunch, we gotta go flying. Through here, I gotta hold on to this. So this is what I'm talking about, look at this. See that, inside there is my rear wheel and a whole bunch of other parts are just sitting in there. It is the perfect size for this, all right? I, I should do a review uh, on this because I know a lot of people have been looking for ways to like just evaporust um, their, uh, their wheels. And this is the only one that I found that was big enough and perfect enough. Uh, to do what I needed to do. I'd love to dive into that bin tonight. I think that would be great. But before we do that, let's take a look at this amazing tank. <laughs> let's take a look at this awesome silver and black beauty that we're building right now, guys. And we're gonna grab our headlight bucket because we're gonna need that. We're gonna need that because we're gonna get our headlight attached to that bad boy. That is our goal tonight. Vinegar works, man. Vinegar works. All right. I think this ring is ready. I think this ring is ready. Diesel feels good to stop tanks from flash rusting. Put a liter or so in and sluice it around inside. Petrol will thin out any traces when you come to use it. Huh, good call. Um, I have used, I, I've sprayed WD-40 uh, in a tank that I wasn't able to fill right away. I did use WD-40. Um, and then I also used some fogging oil um, as well. I actually have that right over here. Um, it's for cylinders and stuff, but hey. It's an oil and it's in an aerosol form. It seemed to work. It didn't rust up. I just kind of, it kind of, you know, just, I don't know, it aerosolizes <laughs> and it sticks to the sides and it sticks to the metal. So the stable fog, fogging fuel or fogging oil, as they call it, um, did a really good job for me. Okay, my biggest challenge right now, honestly, is trying to remember where I put, like, look at this, guys. I've gotten so damn organized, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's a great illustration of, of uh, how, oh, how ridiculous I'm, I'm getting with these bikes right now. Um, I got parts for freaking everything here. And I have all my headlight parts sitting in one of these bins. This, yep, there they are. Here's the little culprits that I'm looking for. This is exactly what I need. Perfect, man, or being organized helps a lot. It 
it helps a lot i'm telling you it does help a lot now i gotta find the headlight what did i do with the headlight i had a headlight that i was going to use and i put it someplace safe have you guys ever put anything someplace safe before have you guys ever put something someplace safe ah i see it I did put it someplace safe. Any oil will do, but can attack rubber seals as well. Oh, no, that's not the headlight. This is an entirely, there's my backup light. There's another one. I've got another one there, but I had a bulb. I had just the bulb. What did I do with it? What did I do with it? Again, I put it someplace safe. I'm telling you guys, I am a lost cause sometimes. Just not remembering where the hell I put it. Can I put it up here? Nope, I got carburetors, I got brakes, I got more carburetors. Here's, I got another headlight. I got another headlight. I thought I had just a bulb. I swear I would have. Unless, ooh, these I wanted to show you. I'm actually really glad that I found that. Oh wait, these are not the right ones. Yeah, no, they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Oh, those are the ones. There, these are the ones. There's a difference in these gators that I was not aware of. So I want to show you that for sure. Oh, man. What did I do with it? This does not look like a safe place for a headlight bucket. Or for a headlight. That definitely is not a safe place. That definitely is not. Gauges, lights, handlebars, exhaust. I mean, here's a headlight. Here's a headlight, there ain't nothing wrong with it. That might be the one that I, I might just put it up there. Who knows? Who freaking knows? Go back down. Let's put one together. I could have just cleaned this one up. This one's actually in really good shape. Why the hell didn't I do that? Well, I'll have two really nice ones then, I guess, when I'm done. Got one, one good one for reference, at least. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Brian. What the hell? Trevor got super strange looks walking around the store, shopping trolley filled with only vinegar. You know, I got kind of a weird look the other night at the grocery store because I had five gallons of vinegar. I'm pretty sure people were like, what in the hell, dude? What are you up to? I'm going to need two of those. Two of those. Don't need that. So you're going to need a couple of these. All right, he's going to hold your light to the frame. And then you're going to need an adjuster screw. That's going to be a spring, a very small nut. All right. Yeah, Roger, I, I think this is the one that I meant to get. Pretty sure. Um, what I'm going to do here real quick, though, is I'm going to... Hit the wire wheel up. Now, wire wheel requires safety glasses. So I am actually going to put safety glasses on. And I'm just going to knock some of the rust off of these parts. Clean them up a little bit. Big fan of just cleaning everything that you possibly can.
Yeah, when you're using a wire wheel, man, do not forget. Do not forget your safety glasses. Gonna be good. That one's good. That one's actually really clean, just as it is. So I think we're good there. Now I need to take those out. Put my glasses back on, because I can't see shit. All right, make sure I'm not missing any of your chats. Man, we still got a good group of people rocking and rolling here. This is awesome. So a couple things to look for when you're putting these together. You're going to have a little adjuster hole on one side, and you're going to have a little bit of an adjuster bracket right there. So let me try to remember. How in the hell did you do this? Okay. So you drop this in. Here's the tricky part. Okay, so you've got, here, let me get you a little bit, little bit closer. Let's see how close I can get you on this deal. Let me tank you down just a little bit. All right. Everything good? Everybody hear everything good? Everybody see everything? This was a little bit of a puzzle the first time I did it. Now, chances are when you took this bolt out, this whole thing fell apart, and you might have wondered what the hell was going on. So if you notice, there is a square nut, okay? Square nut goes on there like that, okay? It goes on this fin. No, don't drop it now. Square thing goes right there just like that. Boop, sits on there, okay? So that sits there like that. Next, you're gonna take this bolt and you're gonna take the spring off. Take your bolt, put it through the, oh, and put it through the front here, just like that, okay, so that's our adjuster. Take your spring and put your spring on just like that. And now you can position your light like this. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that square nut and put that on there, just like that, All right? And that's how that goes, <laughs> okay? And what you can end up doing is tightening this up. If I can find a flat screwdriver. I can never find a flat screwdriver. I've gotten to the point now where all I have are JIS screwdrivers laying around. That's like pretty much all I have. I think all of my flat screwdrivers are actually out in the garage, but that's no worries. I'll find a butter knife or something. We'll be fine. Now, once you kind of got that in place, now you can put your brackets in. Okay, put your locks in. And here's how that's gonna go. So you're gonna line that up just like that. Okay, each one of these is gonna have a little locker spring. Wow, I got that in my finger. You'll need, probably need a pair of needle nose pliers or something, okay? And I am going to need a flat freaking screwdriver because I need a flat screwdriver. There ain't no way around it. Do I got one down here? Do I got a flat screwdriver? I might. I think I do. I think I will have a solution. Just gotta get creative. Gotta get creative with the tools again. There we go. That's all I need. That's all I needed. All right. So you take that pin out and try back this out. Hey, Emmett, how are you, man? Good to see you. Thanks for joining the stream again. It's awesome. We're just putting a headlight back together. So basically, this is going to slide into here. Okay. Eh, come on. Should go pretty easily. I don't remember it being threaded. Yeah, it's not threaded in the light. You just need to push it through. So... 
Get that lined up. Push that bad boy through. Okay, just like that. Grab your plate and your plate. I'm going to reference this one. Yep, goes pushing down. So get your plate. You got your two fins. Oh, See those two fins? They pop up. They're kind of popping up. Up, out. All right. What you've been working on, Emmett? That's going to slide right into that slot here. And this, hard to show you, this part here is actually going to hold that straight so we can screw this all together. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it with my finger like that and bring this together. Boop, just like that. And grab your pin, okay? And I'm going to grab my needle nose. Take a look. There's going to be a little hole. You know, where you slide that pin right back in. Let's see if I can show you that or not. Yeah, probably not. That's going to be tough with the cams. Easy with my other camera um, that I'm using for the other vids, but not so much for this one. All right. And then same operation over here. I'm going to do the same thing. That, oh, Stephen, you went and tried. That damn main bolt still won't budge, even with the 10 millimeter influencers. Might get a buddy to turn and pull the other side of the bolt while tapping. That could definitely help. Um, if anything, get a wrench around the other end of it and start turning it. Um, turn it and then put it, um, just start turning it. And then turn it and then put more deep creep on it. And then turn it and put more deep creep on it. I think. I think on one of the last live streams where we disassembled the bike, I, I think I kind of had to do that. Um, start kind of working it from that side. You can kind of start to pull it just a little bit with your socket or your wrench or whatever you're using from that side. Um, I think you can get it. Um, they, they are fussy, um, but I think if maybe you work from both sides like that, between those two, you should be able to get it out of there. Um, please report back. Um, with your with your efforts because I think you're I think you're right on the money with that um, But I think you can do it by yourself I think you could like start working it from the side and then work over from the other side deep creep if you do have a heat gun or Anything like that um, that could probably Be kind of helpful as well It's awesome that you're like watching the stream and then like you just go out and start working on your bike I'm just trying to get this damn hole lined up here it ain't being too, too good. All right, now we can put our flat thing. Just remember that the edge, that the pointies go up. Oh, man, come on, buddy. Where's my screwdriver here? Bam. That's in place just like that. And then do not forget your little pin. You can put your little pin in here. That went in easy, easy, just like that. And now you're going to see that your headlight is all janked up. It's all crooked. See how crooked it is? It's like sloping this way. It's like sloping down. Well, that's where you just got to tighten up your beam adjuster. You actually, just start putting a little bit of tension on that. Oh, man, the screwdriver's too thick. Need a little thinner one. I don't know if I got one, guys. I might need to just go... We'll grab a knife here. Um, yep, yep. Roger, Roger confirmed. We're on the right track with this. With this, Steven. Steven, we're good. We'll get it. You can work it from both sides. I'm just walking through. I need to find a screwdriver. Hope you guys can still hear me. I shouldn't be that far away. I'm just in another in another room right now. Digging through all my stuff. Trying to find. Ah, perfect. All I needed was like a Leatherman or a little Leatherman or something so I can work this out. All right, this should be narrow enough to do it. And just kind of straighten your bulb, just tighten this. As you do that, that's gonna tense up in here. And uh, yeah, you'll get there. Your light will straighten itself. Now this is where you can adjust the aim of your headlight a little bit. 
once you get it on the bike. But we're about a million miles away from having to worry about that at this point. Uh, we got a lot of work to do yet. So I'm just going to keep bringing this up until, I don't know, until it gets to about there. So I got quite a ways to go on this little bolt here. Do 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 ASMR bolt turning. Be nice if I had you on camera. Being a real jerk, being off camera, showing you guys stuff. Um, don't hit the fitting, man. You don't have to hit the fitting, Stephen. You don't have to do it. If you can get it out, you can get it out. Try, try spin it out. I actually didn't know that you could get those out, Roger. I'm kind of tempted to go grab one and, and pull that out. There's our light. Now, the OCD in me wants to make sure that this is either straight up or straight across. But there, we got a headlight, and we got full wiring all right here in place. I did test that headlight. I, didn't, I, did, I did that before I put it on the shelf. Um, so I know the light's good, and we're in good shape. I'm just going to hit this a little bit more with some polish, because that's what I like to do. And we got our lights pretty much squared away. I got the brake light that we could work through. Um, I'm not sure if I'm really feeling it, man. We're at two hours on the stream, man. Two hours we've been going. Jeez, what time is it? It's 9.30. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I'm not getting any crazy Twitter alerts from the news right now, which is nice. That's an awesome trip. I'm going to actually do that right now live on stream because I did not know that you could get those things out. I love it when I'm learning stuff on stream. How about that, guys? How about that? Bada bing, bada boom. I'm loving it. This one, I can go back in the box. But now I'm going to grab this bolt. I'm going to see. I didn't know you could get these bad boys out of there. Get out of here. Oh, excuse me. All right. So what? This brass fitting does just screws out. How you doing that? What you saying, Roger? What you saying? If you remove it, spray WD-40 down the hole. Oh, okay. If I remove it, should unscrew and come out of the swing arm. So just use like a plier. Or? I don't think these needle nose are going to give me the, the grip that I need on that. This one's pretty crusty. This one's pretty crusty. Not sure. That's going to come out of there. I wonder if this one comes out of there, too. Man, I, I did not know that these came out of here. Makes sense that they would come out. Huh. Fascinating. Well, nah, shoot. Now, goddamn, look, I got all this stuff all over my hands now. Oh, brutal. Huh. I'm going to mess with that. I'm going to actually drop this into, into the solution over there. I want to keep going on this headlight for now. Do not get distracted, Brian. Shiny objects. Shiny objects. Let's keep moving. Okay. I'm going to put the pair of gloves on, and we'll get this headlight done. Get me a pair of gloves. And let's grab our headlight bucket. Oh, I love that silver. I love that silver. See how it's got kind of like a little, kind of a pearl to it? And this is a, this is a big chip in the bot. This is the bottom of the bucket. I don't really care. Love it. I love it. All right. So we got this. And then. Da, 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 da. All right, so we need this. And there's a couple parts that we need. So I should have everything I need in here. So I do have, is there a rubber in here? Yes. I have a full top light, which is fantastic. So I'm going to take this piece like this and then put this into here. Should fit. Boom, even still has the damn gasket on it. So that is my high beam indicator. All right. Oh, wow, I got two of these. These made it up. Sweet. 
All right, so this is extra special right now. This is fantastic. Oh, fumble fingers. Let's see, which way did this go? Da, 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 da. I think it goes this way. Yeah. Yes, it goes this way. So I gotta push this in here, just like that. Shouldn't have taken it out to begin with, huh? Shouldn't have just left it in there, see? Oh, come on. Come on, buddy. What did I mess up here? here? Where's my WD? When all else fails, reach for the WD. It's going to be good for this piece anyway. Uh, so it doesn't look like I had treated that. There, that's all it took was a little bit of WD-40. Get that going. Give that a quick wipey wipe. And then basically, this just is going to screw right onto here. Be freaking careful with this piece. I cannot emphasize that enough. I have broken many, many of them. All right. This is, it's like a plastic piece and it will break. All right, next, looking at this, I'm going to need a couple of stops. All right, so this, let's see. Do, 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 do. These I'm gonna clean on the wire wheel here real quick. Clean these up. See how many of these I can drop. Oh, safety glasses. Safety glasses going on when you're working on a wire wheel. Wow, I saw that. <laughs> Came out of my hand and I saw it fall. It's a real small little piece. Bam. Brand freaking new and shiny. Look at that. That's going on the bike. One more to go. Let's see if we can lose one. Perfect. All right, so those are gonna be cleaned up, ready to go. Let's get this back over here so we can watch what we're doing. It's like that. And these are just gonna pop into here, okay? These are just little stops that get popped into here. It's like that, and there's one more on the bottom side on this side, bam, just like that. So those are those two go there. And let's see, I need two headlight screws. There's one, there's two, that's it. So these are pretty rusty. Okay, these aren't in the best shape in the world. So before I go, you know, diving into that, I'm going to take these back to the wire wheel. I'm telling you, having a wire wheel and a buffing wheel at your disposal down in the shop is a lifesaver. It's crazy too how like over time you start to just recognize certain bolts. It's like, oh yeah, those are those headlight bolts. That's what those are. You could buy new ones. 
right? You could totally go buy new bolts. I ain't too worried about these. Again, I'm trying to treat this a little bit like a budget build. Use the parts that I got. You know, use stuff that I got, reuse as much as I possibly can. And go from there. Thanks, Steven. I appreciate it. Man, this light's going to look freaking cool when it's together. Do I have a JIS screwdriver? Oh, my God. I do. I do have one. <clears throat> All my other ones. I got a bunch of stuff out in the garage right now. So... Other things to pay attention to. Here's our holes for our grounding cables. Uh, nicked my finger just a little bit. I don't really care. That's all good. Um, boo -doo -boo -doo -boo. Let my hands air out here just a little bit. Am I the only one that, like, my hands just, like, sweat like crazy in these rubber gloves? Like, in the summer, sometimes it's like... The sweat starts like pouring out the bottoms of them because it's just so hot. Yeah, squeaky, 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 squeaky. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. <laughs> I'm, I am thrilled. So we've got this. I thought, yep, here we go. Here I've got my bulb for this. I did test this bulb. The bulb was good. Um, so this bulb just pokes into here just like that, okay? This is your high beam indicator. This will go into the wiring harness, okay? So that's in, that's in place. Um, we'll need a couple of these spacers. Spacers, these spacers right here. So, um, you should have put your gloves back on. I did, I got my gloves back on, man. I got them on, I got them on, I got them on right now. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. I took them off because I ripped a hole in them. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I am gonna gotta wire wheel this shit now. So WD-40 technically isn't a lubricant. It's a, it's a water displacement thing. Um, it's, a lot of people use it as a lubricant, but it's not really a lubricant. That's not what it's really for. It's kind of a temporary fix lubricant. I saw it. I saw it hit the floor, guys. No worries. Boy, these are rusty. These are real rusty. So from what I know about the history of WD-40 is that it was actually developed to prevent water from corroding like rockets and like for NASA, if I remember right, it was something that they developed to prevent corrosion on the outsides of rockets. Random fact. I'm pretty sure it's a fact. I, I mean, I've heard that in several places. Uh, but it's not really a lubricant. Um, here we go. Let's pop these into here. Oh, that went all the way through. Got. Oh, come on, B. Pop this in. Just like that. Some of these are getting a little loosey-goosey on me here. I mean, I don't have to put these in right now. Honestly, I could just get the bulb in. I can put these in later when I'm actually mounting the thing to the bike. Uh, same goes for these two little deals here too. I, well, no, I need that. I need that. So one that one fell out already. So I lost that. Oh, here it is. I found it. All right, let's just put the damn lens in. Just because, and mainly just because I want to see what the hell it's going to look like. This is an extremely uh, selfish endeavor today. All right, on your headlight, there's going to be one section of it that's got kind of an L or a little bit of a bracket, like here. This is going to clip onto here. So here's the top of your headlight bucket is indicated by that high beam indicator. OK, 
Okay. This will all go in here. We'll get this all tied into the wire har wiring harness eventually. Um, these wires need to stay in there. <laughs> and this is going to basically just kind of hook on this piece right here. It's going to hook right there. And then, oh, God, come on. I'm trying to show you, and I'm doing it all wrong. All right, we're going to take that. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Just like that. And just want to make sure that you get these around these holes on this side. All right, and the whole thing should kind of fall together for you. Just trying to see here. It should all go together. Come on. Oh. More news, more, more world news, world dominating news. Very curious to see how all of these things are going to turn out here in the U.S. There we go. There, I had it. I had it. Oh, I had it. I actually just bend this just a little bit, I think. Yeah, this one's bent out just a little bit. So move that in. This should go. This should not be a pain in the butt. I don't know if evaporating is the same thing, but yes, it will dissipate, dissipate over time for sure. There. So you give it a little bit of a turn. It's just off just a little bit. Yeah, look at that. That is going to be so freaking cool. It's going to look cool. I got to just turn it just a little bit. So once you get these lined up, you can put these caps in. But it's got to be like right on and it's off just a little bit. Got to turn it just a little bit. Get this thing lined up just perfect. There, that should do it. See, we got that. Drop that. And let's see if we can screw this in. Just like that. And it should be lined up over on the other side as well. And it is. And then you just kind of screw this in. So I've got two cracks. I've got one crack here, and I got one crack here. You'll never see this one on the bottom. What do you think? I think it's going to look kind of cool. I think it's going to look pretty cool, guys. Do that. Yeah, we got ourselves a headlight bucket. All our wiring is in place. A couple, actually, not all the wiring is in place. Once we start to attach it to the actual motorcycle, um, there's going to be another thing that we need to do. I wonder if I have that. What did I do with those? I know I had some. I know I had a couple of those, um, the little grounding posts. What did I do with those now? You know, I used to be very organized and I just suddenly have stopped being organized in the shop. Um, man, I thought, because I'm going to need these two things, these two spacers for sure. We're going to need those. We need these two spacers. But there's these grounding blocks that I need. Hmm. <laughs> Where would I have put those? Where would I have put those? I know I put those in a safe space. In a safe space. I know I did. 
put those in another safe spot. I swear I put them in here though. I swear that I put them inside of here. Edges, no. Rubber. There's some more badges. Spark plugs. It's all rubber. It's all nuts. Not there. Huh, God, I swear I have. I know I have a set of those. Uh, either way, I don't need these right now. I'm going to put those back in the box. I will need them at a later time. Man, that's going to look something special, huh, guys? Doesn't that look good? I think that's going to look really good. I am jazzed about that. I'm just trying to see... Where? Oh, there's one. That might not have been my set. But at least I can show you what I'm looking at. So inside the bucket on the edge here, on this side, this grounding post goes in. This wire is your ground for your blinker, basically. Okay. Um, I should have actually put that in. That would make my life easier, but I can't find it. I have a set with the wires on it, so I could just feed my wires right through and make that all work, but I cannot find it right now. One of the goals this weekend for sure is to organize some pots, because this is getting out of control. Getting out of control. It's pretty messy in here. Man, I wish if I could find them, I'll put them in. But I'm not seeing them. They're not on my gauges. They're not there. They're not there. Ooh, I was looking for those though. So that's a good find. Hmm. 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 Whatever. What's going on in chat, guys? What's going on? I gotta take a breather here. We're at uh, two hours, 18 minutes. We've been going for a little while. What do you think? I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. Put that back over here. Bam. I'm feeling good about that. I'm going to put this back in here. That's where that should go in the first place. Whew. We've gotten some stuff done tonight, though. We've got, definitely gotten some stuff done. What do you guys think? What should we do? Should we do anything? I'm getting kind of freaking tired, to be quite honest with you. What time is it? 10 o'clock. It is 10 o'clock now. East Coast America. Let's get a quick election update. Let's see what happened. Did anything happen? I don't think anything, I don't think anything's gonna happen until tomorrow. Tomorrow might be a big day. We might get some news tomorrow. Stuff's weird. Uh, do, do, do. Um. Yeah, nothing. No good news. Lab Rat, thanks for hanging out, dude. I really appreciate it, man. Um, thanks for coming. Come back. Come back. I'm going to try stream more regularly again. Guys, I'm sorry. I have been was laid up with the COVID for a couple of weeks, and I just I really, nobody wanted to see me. I was grumbly. I was crabby. I was a terrible human being for a couple of weeks. Uh, Trevor, the uh, it's a plastic bucket. It's a plastic bucket. Um, I think they are all plastic, as far as I know. You can get uh, nice metal ones, uh, common motor. And I'm sure other people, I'm sure 4 into one sell them as well, um, sell good metal ones. And the metal ones are actually a little bit bigger, which kind of gives you a little bit more room for the wiring, um, which can be a real pain. 
okay? Um, the, the, there's not a lot of room inside that bucket, so getting a little bigger bucket can be um, very, very beneficial. I'm kind of curious on this trickster question. Um, no new member requests. No new member requests. That's so sad. But what I'm looking for is WD-40 evaporate. I'm kind of curious. WD-40. Oh, here, I can show you. WD-40 will evaporate out in no time at all. It's a penetrating oil, not specifically a lubricant. There you go. Let's click on that. Let's read some more. Hope you guys can see. Yeah. L leaves a nasty grunge. Yeah. I use it on my uh, chrome over the winter. I'll just spray some WD-40 on it or wipe some WD-40 on it. Um, and it'll ev evaporate out, but it does seem to protect things. So here, this Johnny guy, WD-40, will evaporate out in no time. It's a penetrating oil, not specifically a lubricant. It has better solvent properties for dissolving crap and old baked on grease than actually lubing itself. Yeah, I don't know if it's a penetrating oil. It's a multi-proof, it's a multi-use product. That's what it says on the can. It doesn't specifically say that. Yeah, so let's see if there is another. Will it leave a residue? Inhale WD-40? My God, how much of that have we inhaled over the years? What is left? I love the internet, guys. The internet's crazy. What is left after WD-40 allowed to evaporate? I often see people ask, what is WD-40? And mainly whether it has any oil in it. It's just solvents. Water dispensers, answers vary. Yeah, answers do vary um, quite a bit. So I filled a glass in the height, blah, blah, blah. Jeez, this guy went all in. Oh, definitely not a lubricant. Can I get an official statement from WD-40? Facts and uses. WD-40, they're calling it a solvent. All right, it's a solvent. It's a water displacement. Yes, okay, I was right about that. Water displacement 40th formula. It's the name straight out of the lab book used by chemists who developed the product back in 1953. Chemist Norm Larson attempted to concoct a formula to prevent corrosion, right? So I was right on that. Okay, I'm accurate. I'm not lying to you guys. A task which is done by displacing water. His persistence paid off with WD-40. Okay. Empty a pro Why can't I empty all the product out of my aerosol can? Uh, I haven't had that problem. I've worked through it just to that. Yeah, I'm a little... <laughs> who's saying this? I guess he... Uh, Steven, yeah. The wiring is, can be a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, the, it can definitely be a little tricky, but it's doable. Okay, if you just take it just a little bit at a time. What's the difference between flammable and combustible? Yeah, it's a plastic bucket for sure. It's a plastic bucket. Is WD-40 multi-use product a lubricant? Yes. Okay, so WD-40 says yes. While the WD and WD stands for water displacement, WD-40 multi-use product is a unique special blend of lubricants. The product's formulation also con contains anti-corrosion agents and ingredients for penetration, water displacement, and soil removal. All right, so they're claiming it's a lubricant. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, like, nailed my microphone. Sorry about that. Um, la how long does it last after application? Depends. Man, this is, like, one of the best FAQ pages I have ever seen. Way to go, WD-40. You know, this, uh, this is a useful landing page right here. They could do a little bit better in their SEO, though. Their search engine optimization, that's down quite a ways. I mean, you would think WD-40 would lock right in here, but they've got a forum, and they're, what, number three, number four, three, three or four? Yeah, they could do a little bit better. Anyway, we're, we're sorry, went down a rabbit hole there, but I got kind of interested in that question uh, that came back from Trickster. 
I uh, hope that helps. So they technically call it a lubricant, a uh, multi-use lubricant. Um, but I, I think the lubricant's a little light, but it can be used for it. Okay, it's kind of, it is what it is. Pick what you want. Oh. I think I'm going to call it, guys. It's two and a half hours. This is a pretty good stream. Um, I'm feeling good about that. Uh, we accomplished a lot, <laughs> actually. Uh, I feel really good about what we got done tonight because we've got these beautiful lights done. All right, these are all cleaned up, ready to go. I'm going to do a little research, see how, to, how we clean these all up here in a little while. Let's see, I was thinking maybe those ground posts were, were actually in there. Nope. Um, what else did we do? Okay, so we polished those. We maybe didn't accomplish a whole lot, but I think we did kind of fun stuff. We were just kind of doing the time sucky kind of stuff. We got our headlight put together and ready to rock and roll. So that's all there. And then we got to show off the beautiful, beautiful tank and side covers. Ah, oh, man, I just love this. This is going to be a beautiful bike. This could very easily be um, in the running for one of my most favorite um, bikes out of my group. I just love the way that this is going. This is going to be fantastic. Yeah, this is going to be freaking great. can already see it kind of do -do 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 -do, hanging out there just like that. Please don't roll off the table. Please don't roll off the table just like that. But yeah, that's what we're going for, 1970 CL350. That's going to be something else, man. That is going to be something else. Boy, it's a little, a little bright. I wish I could get just a little bit over, get a little bit better light so you guys could see what we're working with here. But man, this tank came out freaking beautiful. <laughs> I'm so pleased with that. Um, next kind of up on the... The, the, the block here is, um, um, Kevin, I haven't sold any of them yet. Um, um, yeah, I haven't had the heart to part with them, and I really haven't had to part with them yet. Um, I'm sure I, I probably will sell, or I, there, there are some ideas for, for uh, some charity stuff that I think would be fun um, to talk about as well. It just kind of depends on how the, how the channel progresses and what we end up doing. We got all this geared up. I mean, as soon as I can get that front, um, get the, uh, the frame sandblasted and get ready to go, I mean, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna dive in, get the front forks all put together. Um, everything is here. Every single bolt is cleaned. All the, all the rubbers are treated. Like, this is 100% ready to go. Um, it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. We've got the bike. Got our frame kind of sitting over there. I'm probably not going to go with that. Um, the only, I think maybe I'll, I'll save this maybe for, for a stream in the next couple days is to tackle this evaporust bin because um, we do need to clean out do need to clean out the, uh, the, the bin. There's a lot of parts in there um, and my rear wheel is in there and I also need to get my front wheel in there um, so we can de-rust that. And I think that'll probably be one of the next videos um doing that uh steven what are your thoughts on parts from common motor company I, I love common motor i purchase a lot of their parts um lately it does seem that they've had a little bit of trouble keeping stock but everybody in the world is having problem with supply chain right now so i mean that's not their fault um sometimes their prices may appear to be a little bit higher um but i I get the sense that their parts are, I don't know, I, I can't prove this, but just from like weight and feeling, um, I ordered parts from four into one one time, and then I ordered the original, like the same parts for the next bike from Common Motor, vice versa. And it felt like the Common Motor parts were just a little bit more quality. So I, I feel like you get what you pay for, but they're a little, sometimes it can be a little expensive. With that said, I, uh, you know, I have probably 70% of the parts that I've put on the bikes um, have probably been from CMC. And 
you know, it's really on this bike that I'm branching out a little bit to find some other sources and try to save a little bit of money. Um, and that's really only because of uh, stock problems. Not like only certain people have parts right now. A lot of people are out of stock with stuff. So I love Common Motor. I mean, they, you know, in all honesty, they helped me get through my first bike, you know, their series of videos. And in many ways, Common Motor probably inspired me to start doing it. I mean, I wanted to start kind of filling in some of the gaps of the videos that I needed as a beginner, as a first time motorcycle owner in my 40s. Um, I just wanted to fill in some of those gaps. Trevor, if you had the time, plastic welding the bucket would have been cool, but completely understand why you didn't. Yeah, it's, that one, that one crack doesn't bother me. It's on the bottom. Um, I did do, I had, let me see if I can find that. I might have thrown it. Don't remember if I threw it away or not. Um, I did do some plastic welding on one of them. Yeah, here it is. So here's another headlight. Let me see if I can find it. I think this is the one. Yeah. So I used like a JB Weld plastic bond, I think is what it was. This was complete, oh shit, I hate that. I hate that light, that light, I gotta change that light because it's just flooding everything out. Um, let's see. So this was completely, I had a lot of stuff on my desk right now. This was, zoom, focus, focus. This was completely cracked out. This was completely cracked out. And this is all sanded down. Um, let's see. Yeah, so here you can see it worked really well in repairing it. On the inside here, you can see where all the, the JB Weld went in there. Um, now, you you might be referring to like actual welding plastic, but I just used the uh, uh, JB Weld plastic bond or something. I forget what the hell it was called. Oh, but it was um, pretty legit. Did a good job, and then I just sanded all this stuff out. I ended up finding another bucket that was in a little bit better, in a little bit better shape. Um, but it did a great job. This was a huge crack. It was all the way cracked out, the whole way. Um, so it can be done. Hey, Richard, how the hell are you doing, man? Good to see you. Thanks for joining the stream, man. Kind of not sure how much longer I'm going to be going here tonight. I'm feeling a little sleepy, not going to lie. It's been a, a couple of very late nights here in the U.S. for me. I'm a little bit of a political junkie, and um, I've been just watching what's going down here, and it's called for some late nights. So it's been you know, a couple 2 a.m., 2.30, 2, I think, yeah, 2, 2.30 usually. Ah, watching all of this stuff come down, so... Um, yeah, yeah, Richard, you finally caught the stream, man. Welcome aboard. Um, I feel like now I have to do something else. I have to do something else because Richard got to a stream and he's been kind of chasing a stream for, for, for quite a while. Um, gosh, what do we start looking at? Hmm, Richard, have you seen the, have you seen the awesomeness that we've been working on? Okay, Richard, let me just show you. I want to get your thoughts on something first, though, before you go, okay? I've been showing them off all night, and these the people who've been watching for a while might be bored with it, but I'm not. It's my stream. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I think, Richard, you've been trying to get on the stream here for, for a few months. Um, so happy to give you a quick tour of the bike. What do you think of the silver and black? I'm loving it. God, I love this. And I love the blacked out badges, man. Absolutely love the blacked out badges. Oh my God, it's so good. There's our fork here with the reflector, all polished on the buffing wheel. 
and you can polish everything on a buffing wheel. Uh, there's my phone going off, more election news. Yeah, it's going to look, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a million bucks, dude. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be amazing. Super excited about where that's going to go, man. And It's a rattle can, freaking rattle can, man. You can do a really good job with a rattle can, I'm telling you. This is amazing. And on top of that, it's VHT paint. So <laughs> it's affordable and cheap, too. So, yeah, man. We got a lot going on in the studio. I'm telling you, there's a lot going on. Lots of projects, lots of projects. Lots of stuff going on, man. Thanks, Richard. I, I'm glad you like it. Um, I, I think it's going to be really special. I'm, I'm debating whether or not um, to do like a, like a black pinstripe or a black and gray pinstripe, something along those lines. <sighs> we'll see. That would be a whole other video of like cutting out custom decals and and doing all that, so yeah, I think we're good, guys. If if you've been following the stream and you you haven't signed up for the Facebook group yet, um, please do that. Um, please do that. Um, let me see if I can grab that, pull that up for you. Keep on wrenching. Keep on wrenching page. I would love to keep adding some members. We added, I think, a couple tonight. Um, let me refresh this page. Let's make sure that I've got everything we need but man yeah we're up to 34 members now and we got two more member requests how cool is that okay let's get these people approved kevin you're in steve you're in we're in that's awesome that, that like makes my day guys that makes my day the group is growing we're finding new people um all the time 36 members how cool is that um, go check out, please share what you're working on. That's what I personally love so much about what's, what's happening on the group. Um, we're just sharing projects. We're asking questions. We're trying to help people wherever we can. It's really, really cool. Um, man, there's so many projects, <laughs> uh, going on at one time. So, you know, bikes, <laughs> fun stuff. It's just such a great, uh, a, a great, great, uh, um, resource man it's just so fun i just really really enjoy it um so make sure you do that uh join that um other things i mean i'll honestly like comment and share on the video series on the live streams tell your people about the stream i think that would be awesome that's the best way i can grow you know um, I'm going to be adding a bunch of different options here in the future um, to support. I'm, I'm building a little mini little micro site um, that's going to have a bunch of resources, photos from like a ton of photos from the builds, a uh, good resource for people getting into this stuff, a good reference source. Uh, that's going to be coming. I'm going to keep making videos. I got back into making some videos again too. I had a blast making that polishing video. Um, really got inspired, and that that was really kind of my first day back from from COVID. Um, you know, that was I knew that I was feeling better after that when I when I was like, you know what, I need to make a polishing video, and I came back and I did that. So um, that was cool. Uh, I hope some of you guys saw the upgrade on the Instagram account. I uh, made a major upgrade to my garage shop. Um, if you haven't seen that, go to the Keep On Wrenching Instagram page. And, uh, and uh, the TikTok account I have some fun with once in a while as well. So if you're on TikTok, that works. Uh, Kevin, seriously, I have manuals and the SOHC forums, but your channel has been a one, one-stop shop for specific restorations. Thanks, dude. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that they're useful. Always double-check the manual. <laughs> um, but man, I, I worked really hard to make that as accurate and real true to life as possible, that series. And it's, it's amazing. To, to, every single day I'm getting comments on, on some of those videos. And um, yeah, it's just fun, man. It's like this evergreen thing that's going to be following me around, um, you know, probably in, you know, until YouTube goes away. Probably, right? And I don't think that's going anywhere anytime soon. So... Um, I look forward to watching that series grow. It's it's crazy. Like a couple of those videos have like 350,000 views on them. 
And I didn't see that coming. So it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you want to support kind of what I'm working on or just hang, one, just hang out and have fun on the streams because I'm loving this. Um, but also just share it. Let's get this stuff out to people. Um, everybody's saying it's helpful. Um, so it'd be fun just to, just to do that. Uh, Richard, oh yeah, I forgot you're sick, Brian. I'm glad you're feeling better. I hope the whole family made it through. Yeah, dude, I can't. It's a friggin' miracle, man. Nobody else in my my household got sick. Um, yeah, that was really really nice. Uh, but I, I was isolating. I was being really careful about that because I had to travel. Uh, came back and did that. So made some good precautions. Um, yeah, like Richard hasn't been on the stream uh, before. He's been chasing me down for a long time. So. I just want to give, a, and, and for everybody, honestly, just give you guys a quick little tour of kind of what the shop looks like, and it's grandiose. So you guys see a lot of stuff, right? Um, here's kind of the, the, the storing. Then here's kind of the, the heartbeat right here is the, the PC. And here's a wireless lav that I'm using. Uh, so the audio is pretty good. And I'm just running a normal PC with uh, OBS Studio, or Streamlabs OBS, actually. And uh, just running a really simple setup, running cams um, throughout the shop. So we got one cam on table one. And then here you can see the other cam. Here's a cam on camera two. This is where we do a lot of kind of the heavier work. This is a really heavy little work table. Um, so yeah, and then this is just all storage and tools kind of hanging out here and parts parts all stored up under here I got my tools hanging out there here's where I can kind of keep an eye on the chat and I got all my video ideas and, and things like that and then we just do a quick walk over here here's table one put up a curtain so you guys don't have to watch my cats poop thought that was kind of very thoughtful of me uh, here is this the other table just like that if we come around this way then Here's where I spend most of the time. This is where we do most of the work. Um, right here, we've got kind of our up light. We've got good lighting in place. Uh, this is where I'm usually talking to you. All right, that's the setup. I got a cam and a front light. And that's where I'm looking <laughs> when I'm talking to you guys. It's kind of crazy. Um, and then here's the workspace here. And then it's storage. The whole other side here is just storage. I've got a bunch of tanks, cables, um, you name it, everything we need. Everything I've got, pretty much, is all sitting here. And I've got another couple engines out in the garage as well. And, you know, we've got our little grinder that we can move around and do whatever we need to do. So, yeah, that's kind of, kind of the gist of the shop and the little work area. It's a lot of fun, man. I, I'm so happy to be back. I um, was really missing doing it, so I'm glad you guys are hanging out with it. I mean, if you guys want to do any of this stuff, this is not rocket science. It's uh, pretty easy to do. The software is all free. And uh, as you can see, I'm just using regular, regular cams and having a good time with it. So, oh, four viewers, two hours, 44 minutes, guys. I think I'm going to call it. Uh, thanks for the support. Tonight was a fun stream. We had, we had a great group of people come through here. Um, really, really good. Uh, Trevor, this is my first live stream and super happy to promote anyone willing to learn and pick up some new skills. It's great to see and fun. Thanks, Trevor, man. Awesome. Um, trying to keep it real, dude. Um, I don't have much of an ego. <laughs> uh, I mean, you guys almost saw me, you know, cut my fingers off twice tonight um, on the uh, grinder and the buffer. So, you know, we're learning together. Um, I'm pretty new to motorcycles and I'm learning along the way, but I do have a great passion uh, for, for this stuff, so I appreciate the kind of words. Um, Richard, my wife heard the cat pooping part and is dying laughing. Well, their litter boxes are on the other side of the, the wall, and I think, I can't remember if it was like one of the first live streams or if I was making a video. I don't remember what it was, but I was uh, watching it back, and in the background, like my cat, litter boxes are like back there and I'm just like great image to promote to the world right um, with all of that so uh, Richard you have a good night uh, everybody else have a good night I'm gonna I'll close this one up here um, this is fun it's this bike's gonna go fast if I can get the sandblaster rocking and I can get the frame done once the frame is done there's no reason not to just plow ahead and get this thing done so 
Thanks so much for stopping in the stream tonight, guys. I love it. I'm going to try to be back again. I'll try to get regular. Um, it's been weird. It's like Wednesday or Thursday nights seem to work out pretty well um, for, for what I'm trying to do here. Um, but I will try to do better of giving you guys a little bit of a heads up when I'm going to do it as well. So, all right, guys, I'm going to call this one. Thanks so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Okay, subscriber subscriptions mean a ton, and you sharing this stuff helps get the word out. So, um, Richard, I think that was the second or third video with the cat in the background. You could very well be right. I know it's out there, so it's a little Easter egg for everybody. So, all right, don't get pooped on by your cat, and uh, just uh, <laughs> have a good night, everybody. We will see you in the next live stream or the next video because I got a whole ton of video ideas on the board back there. So. Uh, take it easy, everybody. Thank you, Richard, Kevin, <laughs> you, Trevor. Uh, man, how many people were here tonight? There were so many uh, people that, that were on here. We had Carlos for a while. We had Kevin. We had Trickster, Trickster was here for a while. Um, Steven. Yeah, this, <laughs> we're building a hell of a crew. I'll see you guys.